When you drive, you have to buckle up. That's why we buckle up and drive you to the Red Zone. Our fan poll brought to you by Toyota. We asked and you on pregame live. Will Brock Purdy win the NFL MVP this season? And remember, this was before the game. Seventy-four percent, you think that he will win it. Twenty-six percent are not that sure. I think that should go up after this game and wait and see what happens on the Dallas Philadelphia game. Let's compare teams, shall we? Today. First downs, third downs. That was a big defensive stand today for the 49ers on third down defense. Only two of 11 total yards. 527 for the San Francisco 49ers. The penalty, something to clean up. Looking forward, red zone offense, impeccable. Two out of two. And again, the two turnovers, the fumble and the interception. Even though the 49ers did not have time of possession, they really didn't need it to win today 28-16 to and improve to 10 and 3. And with that, we go to Cal Shanahan at Levi Stadium. Um, injuries from the game. Uh, we had uh, Charverius Ward had a groin uh, on every turn. Oren Burke's knee. Um, Hargrave hamstring during turn and Greenlaw hip. He did come back. Uh, go ahead. How you get a 12 point win over a rested, somewhat desperate Seahawks team? What about today's win are you most pleased with? It's getting a win. Um, I thought there were some things that uh, were a little sloppy. Um, you know, we we're just a little inconsistent throughout the day, but guys made a ton of plays, got enough points. Um, the two turnovers the defense caused were huge. Um, you know, it wasn't the perfect football by, by any means, but our only goal is to get a win, and we found a way to do it. Brock Hardy, were the Seahawks daring him to beat him over the top? No, they're actually pretty soft in all their coverages. Um, and they have deep guys all the time. You got one off schedule breaking out. Uh, the touchdown to Debo, just their hooker, um, stopped on the play. So when you do that, there's no one by him. And he saw, I think it was 33, he stopped and Brock saw it. And that's why he got a wide open touchdown. I don't see the, the big runs that Christian has almost every time you go left. How hard is it to resist just going left every single time or do you always try to work to try to get to go left with Christian? No, it's not always like that because sometimes I don't know whether it's going to bounce or cut back. So sometimes when we go to the right, it cuts back to the left too. So it, um, a lot of it depends on hashes and stuff and how we're playing. Um, yes, it makes sense to run to the left a little bit more if everything's even, but um, it's not it doesn't always work out the way like it might have come off. A lot of your best offenses have been uh, somewhat methodical, piling up first downs, you know, working the clock. This team is. So it's so explosive today, and it's showing more and more of that. Have you had a team this explosive before in terms of, you know, being able to chunk, get big chunk yardage? Yeah, well, I mean, we got so many guys who can get such big plays on little plays. Um, you know, we went for a big play early in the game, tried to get George and B.A. down the middle, and the two hook defenders were deep in the safety, and some of my favorite plays by Brock on the day because he just went to a check down, which, which was the right answer, and Debo was a five yard check down and he got 30 on it um so it's um i mean that happens on a lot of our stuff and then the more they come up then you can kind of get those easy big plays i mean the, the one uh, george was huge just because they're they're honoring the run and the play before that you could see him blow the run up and um with george and charlie over there um and 22 personnel and they're coming up aggressive and you could tell they did it again that's why they tried to grab george going by him but he was able to fight through the holding and get the touchdown so got a lot of explosive guys and but when you're not just one-dimensional in that way, it's you hope it's a matter of time and just how it plays out. Debo uh, described his play last year as awful. How would you describe his play so far this year? Uh, it's been very good. Uh, we're not done yet, so um, there's a lot more football to play, so we'll see at the end of the year. But I thought Debo came... Um, into this season very ready to go. I thought he was looking really good those first couple of weeks. Didn't have all the stats to show it, but that was just the way that the ball went. But he was really ready to go. And then he had a huge setback with his injuries, um, which took him a while to get back from. And when he did, it still took some time to get back in the football shape. But um, starting a few weeks ago, you could see it. And um, I think he's at the top of his game right now. All right, let's talk some defense today. Fred Warner, he led the team with eight tackles and an interception driving his career best even higher this season. Nick Bosa had four solo tackles, sack and a half, plus two QB hits. And Jair Brown stepping up today, also with six tackles and five solo uh, hits, and the one interception. Back here on the show with you guys, uh, Rod Brooks, Carlos Ramirez, Dante Whitner. Mooney Ward goes out. Everyone, you know, hands to your head. What's going to happen? Secondary stepped up today. 
And then they brought Isaiah Oliver in to mm -hmm. take over for Diamador Lenore in the slot. They moved Lee, uh, Diamador outside to match up with DK Metcalf, Ambry Thomas opposite, and a huge shout out goes out to the young secondary that was able to make some adjustments after the first DK Metcalf touchdown. And it also goes to Steve Wilkes mm -hmm. for making those adjustments, getting both safeties back there and giving some help. And then they stopped the run all day long. There you go. They couldn't get anything on the ground, and that made it easier for the defensive line in the second half is when Gregory and Farrell and Bosa and Kinlaw, those guys started to converge on lock and started to make their presence felt. But all in all, I felt like it was an incomplete game from the defense because they gave up over 200 yards in explosive plays. They had 10 right. plays of over 20 plus yards, and you're not going to win many games. The great part about that is they did get come away with two turnovers. And, and I know it wasn't Geno back there today, quarterback in the Seahawks, and that's a big thing. But however, this team almost beat Dallas a week ago, a week and a half ago on a TNF uh, with that same, you know, receiver core uh, brought, and they didn't do anything today. Yeah, um, you know, Jackson Smith and Jigba uh, was able to get loose just a little bit, and the Niners' pass rush really didn't show up until the second half in terms of numbers, in terms of sacks and quarterback hits, and then it really got going and everything sort of blossomed from there. But I thought the secondary, as Dante mentioned, played excellent without Mooney Ward. Shout out to Jair Brown, not just for the interception, but the way he's been playing, not looking like a youngster, not looking like a rookie back there. And and, uh, you know, it's just one of those games where, you know, at times it was tied right. not in the bottom of the rope and hang on. But the Niners are so good. They're so deep. They're so talented. And they're so smart that even when things are starting slow for them or things are not going in the direction where they expect for it to go, there's no frustration. There's no finger pointing. They stick to the plan. They have the talent. And eventually that talent wins through. Is, is the fact that Steve Wilkes with his secondary um, background, is this the perfect marriage, Dante, for him as a coach and the secondary as a unit for him to develop this young core. I think it is definitely the perfect marriage between this young core of secondary players and Steve Wilkes. And like they said during the game, so many of the 49ers with um, Robert Sala and D'Amico Ryans, they were more so front seven guys. Mm -hmm. They were get after the quarterback with a D line, teach up the linebackers. But the secondary, they were kind of like the stepbrother. They treated it like that. Now they're taking another step. If you look over the past five games, I would say that the 49ers probably lead the NFL in call sacks, which means that they had really good coverage from the secondary, and they allowed the defensive line to get home. So, yeah, yeah they're playing very well, especially without having Mooney Ward for the majority of the game. Shout out to Steve Folks. Back to Levi Stadium, we got reaction right now from Brandon Ayuk. It was big today. Uh, like I said, a little bit sloppy, like on and off. So the big plays kind of helped us get down the field, get in position, get in the end zone. Started off the game with a big play. Uh, I think our second touchdown was a big play again, so uh, it's close. Is it important for you guys to be able to win against the 3 or 4 other? We knew what type of game it was going to be. Um, 500 team in Seattle uh, that we know a lot about. We know what type of game it's going to be. You're yeah. feeling lucky to, to play with a guy like Devo when he has a, a game like this and it seems like he just consistently goes off against the Seahawks. What do you mean? Like, what's it like to play with a guy like that? That boy Cole. That boy Cole. I ain't never seen nobody like that boy Cole. Cole. A lot. That's why we do a lot. A lot. We were talking about some meat left on the ball. It's all good, though. Duh. Duh. How important is it to get home field advantage for the playoffs? Very important. Very important. We love playing here at home. They show that again. It's just super fun playing here at home, so we want to we get, we want to we 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 be playing at home. So as, as well as you guys played in Philadelphia, I, I feel, I'm sure you feel that was enough, right? One time in Philly is enough. You don't want to be going back there, obviously. I mean, I mean, we got Arizona next week, Philly. I'm going to be watching the game tonight. We'll see what they are. I don't know what they are. We'll see. I'm not, nobody thinking about Philly right now. You have 1,000 plus yards already on the season. How does that feel? Wonderful. Wonderful. What can you say about the guy uh, a lot next to you in his play today? I play a dog. I play a dog. He's coming on more. He's coming more. 
All right, let's look ahead to next week. The 49ers go to Arizona, Glendale, to face the Cardinals. They're three or ten. They're coming off a bye week. The Redbirds are. They're fourth in the NFC West. They are not a good football team, but they are better recently because Rod Kyler Murray's back quarterback in this team. Yeah, a guy that can move, a guy that's mobile. Um, the Niners were able to handle Jalen Hurts. I think this will be a good opportunity for the Niners to continue uh, handling mobile quarterbacks, getting ready for the ultimate mobile quarterback. And, um, and uh, all of a sudden I'm Lamar blanking his name at the wrong time. Lamar Jackson, thank you very much, <laughs> teammate. Uh, get ready for Lamar Jackson on Christmas night. But, yeah, the Arizona Cardinals are absolutely not good. Right. But it's up to the Niners to play uh, to their normal standards to make sure the Cardinals don't feel like they're in that game, you know, in the second half or going into the fourth quarter where they would have actual an ability to win it. Uh, the 49ers have an overall net point differential of plus 175. Is that good? Uh, it's very good. The, the Cardinals <laughs> minus 101. Mm. So you just. Is that make, bad? It's very bad. Okay. Um, this is very bad, people. And I mean bad. That's not a. One quarter score, that's not a halftime score, that's the end of the game. The Vikings won by a field goal in the most horrendous football game you can ever watch. The Vikings beat the Raiders 3 0 in Las Vegas. The Niners needed the Raiders to beat the Vikings so they would clinch a playoff spot today. It can still happen tomorrow if the Giants somehow beat the Packers. Now, this is the updated playoff picture for the NFC. The Buccaneers beat the Falcons, so that means one through four, there are changes. The Eagles are one, Niners are two, Lions who lost today earlier are three. The Buccaneers now would face the Cowboys, the Lions would face the Vikings, and the Niners would host the Green Bay Packers. However, if the Cowboys beat the Eagles on Sunday night football, the Niners jump up to one. The Cowboys move up to two, and the Eagles drop to five. That's all we care about. That's all we care all about we so care far. About. So it's a wacky NFC. Anything can happen. And the 49ers do have their destiny in their own hands. If they win out and if the Eagles lose tonight, I'm, that's what I mean, they would have the number one seed in the NFC. And looking at that playoff seeding, there's so many bad teams on there. <laughs> and when I think about it, I just want to hit the delete button. We're just going to keep one, two, and five. Whoever ends up in that fifth position, everybody else should just be deleted mm. off of that board. They don't have a chance. Nothing. It's a three-team race in the NFC, and the 49ers are just the strongest on offense, defense, and special teams out of all those teams in yeah. the race. All right, let's go back out to Levi Stadium. We got Jair Brown speaking of secondary joining us here in the show. Jair, welcome to the show. Dante Wagner, Rod Brooks, and Carlos Ramirez. Talk to us about uh, today's plan, how it shifted when Mooney went away. How did you guys talk through that and the adjustments you had to make once Mooney went out of the game? Um, you know... It's, it's always bad to lose a guy like, you know, Shavarius Ward, a.k.a. Mooney. Uh, but, you know, that's what we pride ourselves on, you know, having the next guy up available, um, ready to go, and make sure there's no fall off within the defense. Um, you know, everybody has the same DNA when it comes to this defense. That's just playing hard, you know, physical, you know, uh, giving, giving your best on the field when your best required. I see you wearing the Kikui nut necklace, and that means that you are the player of the game. How special is it, man, to get that award? And how awesome is it that you guys continue that tradition started by Talado Hufunga, who, as we all know, unfortunately is not able to play because of injury, but you guys kept that tradition of, alive because it means so much to you? Oh, man, it, it's super, you know, special. Um, you know, I, big shout-out to uh, Hufunga, you know, um, Sad to see him go down, you know, but um, for him to still be engaged with us, still cheering us on, uh, being a leader still off the field, uh, it, it's a blessing, you know, to have guys like this around you, man. And uh, just want to give a big shout out to him and thanks for everything he's done, he has done for me. Jair, I'm watching you fly around out there, play fast, <laughs> physical, get your hands on the football. How big of an influence has Deshaun Goldson been on you and with help in that secondary? Man, he's he he's definitely you know been a, a great help. Um, I was watching his highlights the other day, and just the passion he played with, you know, and um, you know the way he flew around, the way he hit people. Um, it's a tradition here at the Niners, you know, to play that that kind of football. And I just want to you know uphold that standard, you know, and uh, contribute the best way I can for the team. 
I want to talk about your interception, Jair. You're a ball hawk in college. Now we see that bring up against in the 49ers today. Uh, break us down that play and what it means to you. Um, you know, I'm in the middle of the field, you know, just reading the QB, uh, recognizing a route tree. Um, watch, you watch Locke go over there, you know, steer down a, a receiver, you know, ran up under it, you know, wanted a high point. I missed one earlier in the game. So this one I wanted to get, you know, a high point, uh, secure the turnover for the team. They talk about when young guys come in how fast the game is. Was the game fast for you when you were pressed into service? And has it slowed down for you? Because you definitely seem to be in full control out there and things are not getting too crazy for you. Um, yes. Uh, when I first, you know, came out, the game was a little bit fast, faster than I thought. Um, but all it is, you know, just getting adjusted, you know, and I knew the more reps I had, the better I was going to get. And I'm, continue, I'm, I'm continuing to grow, you know, in that area. So um, I'm going to continue to get better for this team, you know. I'm going to continue to play my heart out for this team and uh, try to bring a win to the organization every week. Hey, were you trying to get in there and have Fred Warner's back too when, uh, <laughs> when the squabbling started? Oh, man. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's my guy, man. You know, it, it, it's... Fred, you know, he is a great leader, you know, um, and sometimes a leader, you know, needs people to have his back. So, you know, I was there for my guy. Jair Brown, 49ers joining us here on the show. Thank you so much and health and see you next week. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you.